Number 51. A 1.0 molality solution of HCl in benzene has a freezing point of 0.4 uh, degrees Celsius. Is HCl an electrolyte in benzene? And then explain. Okay, so there's two ways of doing this question. Uh, one is via math, and the other one is uh, via theory. Uh, they gave you the numbers here, right? They're saying that it's 1.0 molality solution. It's got a freezing point. So chances are they want you to work this through uh, doing the actual math. So we'll do that uh, answer first, and then maybe I could just go into a little bit of why the same answer could be reasoned out in theory. So for this one, we're dealing with molality, right? This little italics M is molality. And we have HCl in benzene. If you have two compounds, right, in a uh, that's coming together, you have a solution. Now it seems like the HCl is being placed in the benzene. So by that wording, whatever you're placing inside of the liquid media, the HCl, that's going to be your solute. So the solute is usually always going to be the smaller amount that's being placed into the larger amount, which is the liquid form, which is benzene, and that's the solvent. And together, they make up one happy solution. So there's your three S words. Now, they're talking about it's got a freezing point of 0.4 degrees Celsius. So I say, okay, what formula do I know that has a molality in there and talks about freezing points? And that's this, for that's this formula right here right? Your freezing point depression formula. Delta TF, that little triangle here just means delta, that's the change. So you have a change in a freezing point, which is just a degree Celsius, right? It's just a temperature. And this equals to your freezing point depression constant. Um, and this KF value is a constant value for your solvent. So that's why we had to know which one was the solute, which one was the solvent. And I went in the textbook and found out that the KF value for benzene, which is C6H6. So they could say that it's benzene. They could also say that it's C6H6, and that's also benzene as well. So the KF value, the constant, if you're using benzene as a solvent, is 5.12. Uh, degrees Celsius per molality. Okay, this is the molality. And they told us that value already. They told us that it was a 1.0 molality value. So as of right now, I know the KF. I know the molality. So we're getting close. What do they really want us to find out? The delta TF or the I value? Now they're asking for whether is HCl an electrolyte in the benzene. Now, if you have an electrolyte, your uh, compound of interest, your solute, will have an I value of 2 on, not 1, because non-electrolytes, substances that don't break down in your solvent, will have a I value of 1. But if you have an electrolyte, which just means that your uh, solute will dissolve and dissociate into its ions. In this case, H plus and Cl minus, if it's going to break down. So an electrolyte will have an I value of 2 on, so 2 plus, right, whatever. So maybe I'll say, instead of 2 plus, I'll say 2, 3, 4. It really depends on the amount of ions. So if you have two ions and your compound breaks into two, that would be a two. But if you have three ions, you'll have an I of three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So this is probably what we're trying to solve for. The I value is called the Van't Hoff factor. No idea why they called it Van't Hoff factor when there's no I anywhere in Van't Hoff factor, but sometimes chemistry doesn't make sense. Well, the theory always makes sense, but you know, this is what happens when you got scientists trying to, you know, coin things after their names, but hey, whatever, do you, right? Do you. But anyway, is this going to be a non-electrolyte, an I value of one, or an electrolyte, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. 
So we're probably going to solve for this, the I value, which means that I should know the change in the freezing point. Now this also I had to go in the textbook to find out what the pure freezing point of benzene is. 5.5 degrees Celsius is when you do not have any other solute in your solvent. It's just pure benzene. But now they're saying that once I added the HCl in the benzene, it dropped to 0.4 degrees Celsius. So what was that change? Well, the pure freezing point without anything in it is 5.5 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to subtract that from the solution freezing point. It obviously dropped to 0.4. So the change between those two numbers is, what is that? 5.1 degrees Celsius. So now we have a delta TF. Now just know that your delta TF is always going to be a positive value. So if you accidentally put 0.4 minus the 5.5 and you got a negative value, just take the absolute value because this has to be the positive answer in order for the math to work out. So now let's see. We're going to solve for the I. So 5.5 equals, sorry, 5.1 equals the K value of 5.12. Um, and maybe I'll make that blue. 5.12. One, two, times the molality of 1.0, and then solve for x. So ultimately, we're just going to divide by 5.12, because anything times by 1 is the same number, right? Cancel that out. Beep boop. And you probably can guess with, you know, sig figs, what the number is going to be. But let's just throw it into the calculator. Uh-huh. So we get, technically it should be two sig figs, because that's basically what we only had here. So my I value equals 1.0, if we rounded. And 1.0 means that it is a non-electrolyte. 1 just means that you had... Uh, just this one compound chilling in the benzene. This did not break up into two individual ions because then your I value would be two. So the I value, the Van Hoff factor came out to be a one. And maybe, you know, maybe I won't even add the, the point zero. If it just came out to one, that means that it's a non-electro light. And the reasoning behind it is the math. So basically everything that we went through, we found the Van Hoff factor of one. That means that you just have the one compound, no ions in the solvent. Now in the beginning I said that we could also think about it in terms of theory wise. Uh, this is going back to your polar and your nonpolar uh, compounds and how to draw them, right? HCl, if you think about it in terms of snap, right, this, if we split it down the middle, this is clearly polar, right? If you're asymmetrical, you got a hydrogen on the left, you got a chlorine on the right, this is asymmetrical, and this would be polar. On the flip side, you're having, you know, a polar substance in benzene, which is C6H6. And if I drew out what benzene looks like, it's a six-membered cyclic, which just means it's a cycle, uh, cyclic ring that never ends. You have double, single, double, single, double, single bonds rotating all throughout, and each carbon has one hydrogen. This is purely symmetrical, right? You got nice you got nice little carbons, three carbons, three hydrogens up top, three carbons, three hydrogens on the bottom. So this is nonpolar. And the idea here is that like dissolves in like. If you have a nonpolar solvent, you want a nonpolar solute.
But if these are two opposite things, they're not going to try to interact with each other. It's going to act as a non-electrolyte and it will not break down. But if you had water, polar goes with polar, this will act as an electrolyte. So two different methods. And um, yeah, that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for coming to the channel, viewing the video, supporting us. We'll always support you guys. We want you to do well in your classes. And that's why there's thousands of videos just for you guys so that you can learn at your own pace. Um, I'm here with you every step of the way. My brother's here with you every step of the way. Nothing better than having a study buddy, right? Check the description. We got links for you guys to help you out in your classes. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the community. And I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. Always keep learning. And I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.